hello and thank you for having me at Sea Dreaming. I'm very excited to be here and very, very happy to um, think about all of you together, all of us together, thinking about new technologies and new things that are happening with Salesforce. Uh, my name is Dina Tierney. I'm the founder and CEO of Pacific Point. We are a Salesforce consulting partner and we are headquartered in Honolulu, Hawaii, but we have a team in Singapore and we're very excited to be here representing. Uh, you can find me on social at Dina White. I am joined today by my esteemed colleague, Jefferson. Please introduce yourself, Jefferson. Hey guys, good to meet you. Uh, good to be here. My name is Jefferson Fernandez. I'm currently a technical architect and development, development lead consultant and soon our soon to be office in uh, Pacific Point, Singapore. And uh, I'll be there once the pandemic is over. And yeah, you can find me at, at uh, Trailhead, Jeff Fernandez 127, a bit of background like myself, uh, my sixth year in Salesforce development and uh, have 15 cert certifications so far with uh, Trailhead uh, Ranger with uh, 350 badges and 270 plus points. Uh, experiences with different companies such as Cloud Sherpas, Accenture, um, ShipServe, and AODG Singapore. Now I'm I'm delighted to be part of this team. Awesome, thank you, Jefferson. I'm very happy that you're part of our team as well. Thank you. And for introduction's sake, before we jump into today's topic and today's session, I should explain that Pacific Point, um, the most of our customers are in government, public sector, as well as health and life sciences. And they are one of the, those two are very top two industries that are using Salesforce industries. And that's really what we're here to talk to you guys about today. So how Salesforce industries, which is formerly known as Velocity, which many of you may have heard about and known about the acquisition in, in the last couple of years, but how this product is really simplifying development that allows rapid development of customer guided flows, which is what we're gonna show you today, but even more so, it creates more customer facing experience and also some internal facing experiences um, that allow your teams to have rapid development using industry best practices. So welcome to today's session. Our agenda is first off, I'll start off with an overview about why, why is industry's cloud meaningful and what are we seeing our customers reaching out to us and asking about velocity and learning more about it. Next, we'll cover a, a sample healthcare use case and we'll walk through some screens so that you can get a feel for what it looks like from a customer perspective. And then we'll wrap up with tips, tricks, and troubleshooting from Jefferson. He's got a lot of great experience hands-on that I think you're going to find extremely, extremely valuable in today's session. All right, before we jump into the meat of it though, I am a sucker for a good sports quote. And there's a, a gentleman by the name of Tom Brady, who's a US uh, football player who you may have heard of, but he has a quote that I really love. It says, I think sometimes in life, the biggest challenges end up being the best things that happen in your life. And if I can reflect back, it was, it was January of 2020 when I was in Singapore speaking at the inaugural Singapore Dreaming and had an amazing time being with many of you who are here today and, um, you know, I think to the challenges, the, some of the biggest challenges that we all faced in the last, you know, year and a half plus, and those big challenges, I think, have really created um, the best things in many of us. And today, I think, is an example of that, where now we as technologists, particularly in the Salesforce ecosystem, are able to help our customers get closer to their customers and through these digital experiences, be rapid about engaging with their customers. And so I think even though it was a challenging time, I think we there's some really fantastic things and I'm sure all of us can name a number of positives that came out of, out of that experience. Even though we're not able to be in person, I'm sure we will be in that position soon. All right, so jumping in from there. Why Industries Cloud? Um, as I mentioned, a number of our customers are public sector government customers, as well as health and life sciences customers. Um, and we see a lot of our customers asking us about Velocity, our industry's cloud, particularly because they're looking at those industry templates. Uh, what Velocity has and industry's cloud has is really this commonly used data model that is aligned to the industry itself. 
and the processes that go with that. And so what allows is this ability to, um, I think we're going to show you qualify, um, going through that qualification experience. Um, you know, same thing could happen in the telco industry where maybe you're wanting to apply for a certain kind of plan with your phone. And so um, this qualification process, a shop and compare process. And so that capability of quickly presenting options to your customer based off of what their interests are, based off of what they're eligible for, whatever that may be industry specific, can get up and running quickly and your clients are able to compare prices um, the, another thing that it does is with that data model are things like bill presentment. And so bringing that data in from your back office solutions and feeding that in and now having a customer touch point to, to those customers where they're able to see not just the shop and compare, but you can continue to have self-service through a solution like this where you can now view your bill and at all of that kind of at the fingertips of your customers and your teams. And in the public sector, very similar as well. You know, a lot of it is intake. It's intake of applications and el verifying eligibility for certain governmental programs. And so walking through all of those use cases, um, Velocity is really making a difference by creating that commonly used data model that's industry specific to the to and, and the processes that go with that, that is allowing these industries to get up and running very quickly. And that's really the second one, it's speed to market. I mean, in this day and age, we all know we've got to get out there quickly. Our customers are, are demanding a lot of us and solutions like Industries Cloud are where uh, we can really make a difference. And like I said, we've had many customers coming to us asking about these things and asking us, what does this mean? What does this give us? And we're able to talk about how um, they have a business need to get up and running quickly. The other big advantage is really this maintenance effort, the overhead and the enhancements that's required anytime you have a new plan come out and now you want to do shop and compare with that, or you have changes you know, to processes, this concept of a configurable and um, a configurable solution that's pre-built with certain functionalities is really going to allow for some lower enhancement maintenance effort. Um, Jefferson. Yeah. Ask, do you have anything to add on that particular bullet? Right, exactly. So just um, just as Parker Harris uh, mentioned before, so code that's inertia, and then we make things uh, simple and hard things possible. So it, this this velocity um, vertical solutions really drives us to simplify things. Uh, as you know, tech, tech, technical depth is really hard. And what's good about this, it's, it's like a, a drop, drag and drop functionality uh, it's being offered in all the, all of these verticals that you can see on the on the slides here, and uh, development side or technical side of things, we don't have test passes to deploy. Um, the difference is all, all all of the things that you're gonna run into have to be tested on the user side, so no need to really have a a developer that is dedicated to all throughout, and. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're going to talk about the powerful features right after. Awesome. That's great. I actually really like that quote. And it made me think of another quote that I heard actually from Velocity themselves saying, trust the platform. And it's such a, it's a powerful statement, particularly for those of us in Salesforce uh, that work with it. And this trusting the platform is, is really huge. Looking at it and understanding how it's intended to be, to be configured. Exactly. Um, moving on to our next agenda item is a sample healthcare use case. So we are going to show you from a customer's perspective uh, to start what that Omniscript flow might look like. So in our example, what we're going to do is walk through a sample of checking eligibility to see whether or not a customer might. So they can self-serve, check of whether or not they are eligible for right. particular programs. Then we're going to do a shop and compare. So we're going to walk, them, walk you through what that might look like. And then at the conclusion of that, an enrollment process or application process. All right. right. First up, so here's a screenshot, a sample. Um, first thing I'm wanting to do here as a customer is uh, check if I'm eligible for certain programs. And so it's gonna ask me a series of questions that are configurable. And based off of these yes, no answers in this particular example, um, I'm able to determine because I've got some yeses here that I, as a customer, am in fact eligible for these particular for this program, and um, I can show on the next screen if I had selected 
any no's or something that would have disqualified me from being eligible, um, I'm able to control that user experience for the customer and let them know, hey, you're not eligible, but maybe there's another flow or another experience that we want to configure for those that are not eligible. So That's this right. is that is really the qualifying piece. I'll pause here for a moment. Anything about back end that you wanted to chime in on? Exactly. So uh, when when these scenarios happen, there will there are uh, you, the customer will be routed to a different uh, set of flows that can uh, give them options like just generate a code for me until I until the time being that uh, I'll, I'll qualify for myself. So those insurances are basically just maybe a, a government type subsidy. Uh, any pre-qualifications that the customer has to fulfill before they could get into this type of uh, plan offerings. Perfect. Thank you. All right. And then on the next page, if we imagine that this person, this customer was in fact eligible and now they're ready to get started. So now what we're looking for is we're looking at some parameters and criteria that will help determine what particular plans might be available um, based off of now we've determined eligibility, now which ones are, which plans are available. So we've got some parameters that we can enter here. Um, Jefferson, any thoughts before I keep Right, going? exactly. Three, so first. definitely. So all those, for example, regions in Singapore, as we exemplify here, uh, it might not be a big, a big market, but uh, on, on, on big theaters or uh, markets, those, those regions really matter in, in calculating the pricing. Uh, Velocity has a, has, has a rating engine that uh, computes a lot of factors or variables that uh, could incorporate those uh, information. And then of course the customer would wanna choose when, what, what's the coverage date that they wanted to. And behind the scenes, we could also be having a, a date range where we could uh, give some promos if they choose a particular date within this. Awesome, very cool. And now, based on that criteria, we're able to present sort of this nice card format, you know, um, and this is relatively standard look and feel, uh, where now a customer can choose maybe to take a look at the standard plan as well as maybe the premium plan and to click this compare and then see side by side comparisons. Right. Um, they can see some of the detailed information in a kind of a quick snapshot as if I mean, imagine yourself shopping in this format. It's much more uh, visible for you and a much clearer buying process. Exactly. And then so those links uh, will have a pop-up uh, model where it's going to explain uh, further in detail. And as you can see, the, the CSS type uh, of what you can see right now is called Newport. And uh, it's supplied by Velocity themselves. You might see the modern uh, Lightning uh, CSS uh, library in Trailhead, but this is one of, of still existing and currently implemented in, in, in other clients right now. Awesome, great. So if I move forward and I selected a plan on that previous page, now there's I can kind of continue to walk through and you can sort of see at the top, I'm, I'm kind of walking through exactly. this flow and this experience. And in this particular case, I've selected my plan and now I'm able to review my information and you can create a number of different experiences um, depending on what your flow might be but in this particular case I'm looking at my selected plan right and as you can see there's a, a link there view and download quote there's a pdf file behind the scenes that that will be opened eventually to the customer and this uh this pdf can be uh the the, the fields there can be um, supplied with values coming from uh, adobe uh, Pro that can be, that is uh, actually supported functionality behind the scenes by the Omniscript, and you can even customize it if you really want us more more powerful features. You can even create a, a, a visual force PDF uh, that uh, can get values from Salesforce records. Nice, I like that. Great, um, and then we have maybe you know another set. So now that that we've completed the shopping, so we've com completed the qualification, we've gone through. Um, our shopping experience. Now it's time to actually fill out a detailed application. And there's, you know, we don't have a screen for all of this, but there's a whole form and a whole series okay. of forms that you can go through and kind of step through that experience and get all the necessary information to improve right. application enrollment. So as you can see, every other flow, um, you, you will start over again, but this means that you're being routed to, uh, to another flow that will entirely be a different set of uh, forms. 
So this could be routed, you could be routed if you're um, different personas or different type of uh, uh, class levels. So there will, there will be a specific dedicated flow for you. And as you can see, to be exact uh, detailed there, there are even save for later buttons functionality where if the customer gets, gets tired and filling out all the information, they can get back to it tomorrow, you know, with all the information still retained. That's awesome. And we also have the option, like we've kind of fast forwarded through some of, some of these steps, but just to see uh, right. there are some payment functionalities um, that maybe, maybe Jefferson, you can talk best about. Exactly. So I just want to touch on that, that uh, Omniscris have the functionality of a HTTP action where you could in, we, we could integrate behind the scenes with a payment gateway provider, uh, communicate with them via REST uh, protocols. And then uh, that's that just sim simply de demos us uh, the powerful features and what, what features or what what other features that we could build into um, that Omniscript can, uh, can provide to us. Awesome. And now we've completed our application. Uh, we've got an application number and we've, we've basically completed the flow. Right. So as you can see, there are even uh, additional fields there. If you just you want this to be emailed to you, your application forms, together with all the supplied information, uh, jot down your application number, and then uh, there will be a, a button there, another pop up that would summarize your uh, benefits coverage. So uh, after all these informations gathered, uh, it will all, all all be supplied to you in any form that you could uh, imagine, like. Have, have it mailed to you by a, a case fulfillment team that will mail it to you or even have someone call you to explain to you in person. So stuff like that. Perfect. And here's a, a bit of a behind the, the scenes view. We're switching right. gears a little bit, but um, yeah, go ahead. Exactly. So as you can see, this is, this is not one of your examples on Trailhead, but this is still uh, what we call a classic designer uh, um, console where, uh, as you can see on the left side, all the components, actions, actions that I, we talked about previously, like remote actions calling Apex, HTTP calling integrations, uh, di display, uh, how you want to display this in order, functions like uh, uh, formulas, groupings, uh, some inputs like text field, phone number fields, or string fields. And you can embed, embed other Omniscripts as well. So um, there could be a parent Omniscript that will call several children of Omniscripts. And as you can see on the middle side, all of those are like drop and, uh, drag and drop, just like the ones in the flow uh, process builders. And um, each, each of these can actually be edited as a JSON on the top right. And uh, you can entire, view the entire full JSON with all the, all the possible or the expected values that, uh, so you could use that as for troubleshooting purposes. And just one note, uh, one more quick note, as you can see right, right at, the, at the bottom, there are colors behind the, or at the left side of the bars. It indicates that it is, there are conditions inside it that would, that would uh, fire only in certain conditions. There are like if statements, if conditionals, where you want to fire this only in specific types of users, something like that. Awesome. Great. And now for um, some additional feedback, uh, Jefferson's been, deep in the weeds with our team on velocity for a number of years. And so I think he's got some great tips, tricks, and troubleshooting he can pass along. Right, exactly. So since the, we started the um, implementations uh, last year, we have really experienced lots of uh, gotchas that uh, I think will be useful for all of us. Like, like for the first is this one, the percentage sign is like um, a merge indicator in, in velocity. Uh, sometimes we see implementations like there's just a, a one, uh, one, one word, one word inside it where we could uh, be more uh, uh, verbose in uh, putting all the all the path inside it. So, so to be specific with what which phone number are you talking about in the entire entirety of JSON. Um, so this is these ones are very important if you really want to make sure that you really refer to that phone number under this uh, under this path. Next, please. And for example, uh, I know that uh, JavaScript uh, sometimes uh, has a lag time. So it's important for you to sometimes um, reactivate and activate the, the Omniscript itself when you, once you make changes. And just in case you're really wondering why it hasn't been reflected yet, uh, our browser has the powerful features where you could inspect 
and uh, click on the sources tab, look for the template. The template is the Angular JSON and Angular JS templates, the, um, the counterpart of the LWC that Salesforce built for themselves. And where you could uh, enter the name, the name of the template or um, LWC, and then look for if uh, the, the browser has already detected your changes. So this is powerful when, when you're uh, debugging in, uh, in during runtime. Next, please. So just on our experience on classic Omniscript designer, um, every time you make a, even just a short change, simple change, it's always gonna be auto-saved. Uh, we wondered why it happened, but come to think of it. Otherwise, if all your changes, uh, you made a, a ton of changes, but it didn't get, you, 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 click on, uh, you failed to click on save, all, all of those are just gonna, uh, it, it, will stop, it will stop from the moment you, um, from the moment you make the changes, you might not be able to recall everything. So it's important that every type, every simple change could be auto saved, and that's that's what we realized that useful that became useful to us. Next, please. And of course, JSON is case sensitive. We we had to put that into my perspective. So sometimes uh, you have to, we have to put some if conditions and uh, making sure that there are no undefined errors. And just like an example here in JavaScript. Like we put in uh, a shorthand if statement and then uh, assign a default value if, uh, if, if it's null or undefined. Next, please. Okay. So, naming conventions on Trailhead, uh, different types of um, components would require uh, different types of um, combinations of names. So, it is important that you, um, we follow those because it's really going to pay off big time. When it comes to maintenance and how how we want how we would want to name each component to the way we we desire to common bugs are, are found on the around the date and time so it's important that we we also follow if it's really a string or a, or a utc as you can see a utc can sometimes be one day early, one day earlier so sometimes that's something to watch out for Okay, so some formulas are not supported yet. So, so don't be afraid to get created with the logic. So there's a, for example, there's no date formula in a, in a, where we could get the, the date as an integer. So um, we can only, we can only use the string as a, as a way to read the, the entire date and use that uh, string to, to get the particular placing of the, of the integer and use that to make comparisons where, whether it's within the first or the 15th day and then 16th to 30th day. And prevent regression bugs. Be careful with renaming variables, components, because downstream dependents wouldn't notify immediately uh, of missing names or errors until you, you run the actual flow. So this is important because all, all, the, all the errors gonna, are gonna happen during runtime. So this, this doesn't happen in compile time. And so it's, it's important that uh, we, we, we are careful with our changes. If you think there's significant risk of downstream issues, but need to change value for variable based on different conditions, you set values with the exact name and then if statement to capture the change in value conditions. So um, I, I don't have example here, but uh, it's, uh, there are set values component where you could name it the same, the same name, but uh, the contents behind it, uh, there will be an if statement that will change depending on a certain criteria. Uh, what's, what's important is the name of the JSON node would not change. I wanted, um, yeah, so there was an example, the coverage date is based on the current date, but I don't wanna risk having regression bugs. So I named, I changed the name to coverage date to something else. So if I change the name to something else, so I use the formula to change its name based on the logic ramp. Yeah, so just like we talked about. And run regression testing on all scenarios on every change, create test, test cases documenting new functionalities and regressions. And um, explore third party velocity testing that might simplify or automate regression testing. Those, those stuff that we could explore as a third party options that uh, I think are available out there for us for velocity. Our error log uh, capture, uh, we can use try catch blocks on integration procedures. This is one way, one way where we could save um, bugs or uh, errors reported by users. And uh, we could see the documentation there on the link. Go ahead, please. Catch blocks on integration procedures, cache 
um, where we could save um, frequently accessed information uh, on the on the browser. And this is useful if we if we want to improve the performance, like the loading times. And we could use this powerful feature on integration procedures. And storage issues, we we also ran it, ran into storage issues like. Uh, why is it that it's not saving? So we had to run a batch job to delete the uh, um, that are all the saved omniscripts that are older, older than 30 days. So stuff like that. But as long as we inform the user about it and uh, because all, all these records are saved as Salesforce records, all the velocity metadata are saved as regular Salesforce records. So it's up uh, your storage. And these are references to, to our links. Um, the, the main portal and then the user documentations and then the business process library where all, all the templates and processes are explained uh, per vertical for industry. Great. Well, thank you, Jefferson. That was great. That was a lot of information. And I know that mm -hmm. um, you guys have tons of questions, I'm sure. Um, thank you to the sponsors for C Dreaming. And thank you to all of you for listening. We look forward to your questions.